Oh hi, I'm the Heretic. Apologies for my voice. I'm engaged in glorious battle with the fell legions of the Rhino virus. Basically, I'm fighting a cold. So, Project Veritas strikes again. This time, Santa O'Keefe and his little elf helpers rip the still-beating heart out of the remnants of objectivity and credibility in Twitter for all the world to see showing exactly what individualists have been saying for a long time. Senior engineers and officials who work for Twitter are on camera admitting to, well, everything. Shadow banning users for opinions that they disagree with, censoring and banning accounts in the attempt to control people, what they think and how they think it. All fueled by a culture of hyper-partisan censorship that would hardly be out of place in an Orwellian ministry of truth. Oh, but I must be exaggerating, right? Surely a company whose founding principles were as a free speech company can't have fallen that far, right? Nope. Here we have people who, in their own words, are working on things to make Twitter into even more of a collectivist echo chamber than it already is, somehow. But how do you keep, like, like my timeline, like, how do you keep certain things off my timeline? Like, we because people will, like, read we're, we're people. trying to downrank it, but you need to also have a control of your timeline. Downrank what? to decide what to do about Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, half of the people want to ban him, half of the people want to keep him. Does everybody at Twitter feel... Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah, I mean, you gotta go to Google in order to find the, uh, <laughs> the conservative. People have suspected for a long time that there's been systematic abuse on the part of Twitter against Trump and Trump supporters. Hearing it from the horse's mouth, suddenly, it all starts to make sense. One strategy is to shadow ban so that you have ultimate control. The idea of a shadow ban is that you ban someone but they don't know they've been banned because they keep posting but no one sees their content. So they just think that no one's engaging with their content when in reality no one's seeing it. I've heard talk that it's a good thing because they'll use it to ban like Trump supporters mm -hmm. or conservatives. So I didn't know if like that's just a rumor or if that's true. That's a thing. That's a thing? That's a thing. Yeah, like imagine like you have all the tweets ever that happened like from the beginning of time uh -huh. in reverse chronology. Right. right. So like until we get to the actual system that like ranks the timeline, we just like we have a, a bunch of filters removing some tweets. Mm. So like we have a stream of tweets mm -hmm. and we have like one filter just kicking out some of them. Twitter is using its platform and its technology to filter through all tweets anyone could have ever made based on a certain set of criteria can block and prioritize some tweets over others, meaning whether or not your content shows up to someone else is determined by an algorithm designed by people who 99% of the time are anti-Trump and 50% of whom want Trump banned off of Twitter completely. Even if you're not a Trump supporter, this is pretty ominous. Let's go to a random tweet and um, like just look at the followers. Yeah. We'll all be like guns, God, America. Like, yeah. And with the American flag and like the cross. Yeah, no one really likes yeah. America. No. Like who says that? Who talks like that? It's, it's for sure a God. You see? This is what they think about you. Am I the only one who sees how dehumanizing this is? How long have you been stuck in a little echo chamber that you don't even recognize the humanity of people you disagree with? How do you know if it's a bot and not a normal person? Oh, you use machine learning. Like yeah, you look for a Trump or America and you have like 5,000 like keywords to describe a redneck. And then you look and you like parse all the messages, all like the pictures, and then you look for like stuff that matches like that stuff. And like if it, so like you, you sign like like a value to each thing, so like Trump would be like 0.5, like a picture of a gun would be like like 1.5, and like if it comes up, the total comes up above like a certain value, then it's a bot. In the name of protecting Twitter users from bots, they create a dragnet to filter out users and tweets they disagree with ideologically. People who post pro-Trump or pro-gun content aren't even human to them, they're just bots. Russian bots to be specific. Oh wait. Am I being hyperbolic? They they don't honestly think that all Republicans are Russian, do they? I think the majority of the algorithms are against conservatives or liberals. Um, 
I would say the majority of it are for Republicans because they're all from Russia and they wanted Trump to win. So, so you'd mostly just give it a I knew that. Yeah. Was Could it be any more clear? This kind of rampant partisanship is not okay and a clear and obvious threat to free expression. To make matters worse, Twitter is working on a new machine as part of a secret project. Every single conversation is going to be rated by a machine, and the machine is going to say whether or not it's a positive thing or a negative thing. So is it going to like ban, essentially ban certain mindsets and or people who could be negative? No. It's, going to, okay. it's not going to ban a mindset, it's going to ban like a way of talking. Well that's double plus ungood. I could foresee a future of soft censorship. Instead of being dragged into room 101, dissidents are simply shadow banned. The justification for the censorship is that people are still allowed to say whatever they want. It's just that nobody will necessarily be able to hear them say it. Imagine this applied on a societal level. Heretic, what are you talking about? Twitter is a private company, not a government. Oh. The state has leverage to dictate Twitter's censorship policies. Interesting. What? Yeah, they do that. They do? Yeah. Why? Because they don't like people messing with their politics. And you, 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 you actually don't know a lot of people. one social media platform, but in our increasingly cybernetic, interconnected world, our ability to communicate will be dependent on these social media platforms. If the state is able to put pressure on one social media company to soft censor people they don't like, what's to stop them from legislating other companies to employ similar algorithms? For public safety, you see. How do we know they're not already doing it on Facebook or YouTube? No, we're at a crossroads here. A historic gateway, the likes of which the world has never seen since World War II. And we will either march through it freer than ever before in history, or suffering through oppression the likes of which the world has never known. It's very clear which side Twitter is on. Wow, this is really grim. So what can we do? I can think of several things, actually, none of which are mutually exclusive. The first one is the simplest and arguably the most important. Spread the word, talk to your friends and co-workers, share this video and the original Project Veritas video, link in the description. The second, target Twitter's sponsors. I'd suggest boycotting Twitter directly, though let's be honest, it wouldn't work. We can target their advertisers though, see what ads run on your newsfeed, contact them, find the emails of their executives and CEOs, and send them a message informing them that you, as a customer, cannot buy their product so long as ad money is paid to Twitter, an endorsement of algorithm-powered censorship. A good example is Circle C. I found the CEO's email in two minutes. No, I'm not going to post it here, that's doxing. It goes without saying, but be reasonable and respectful. Don't harass anybody. We're not social justice warriors. The third most difficult, but by far the most damaging to Twitter, is to get Trump off of Twitter. Hear me out. Trump has a lot of followers, like a lot of followers. If he gets banned, he will still want to send his message out directly to the American people. He'll just do it somewhere else. Like say, Gab, and he'll take his millions of followers with him too. Not likely to happen, but if it does, if Trump does leave or get banned off of Twitter permanently, Twitter will be dead within the week. Goes without saying, sign up for Twitter alternatives like Gab or Minds. Twitter is living on borrowed time. Come the collapse of the state, they're finished. So what do you think? Got any companies in mind you know advertise on Twitter? Strategies to get Trump to leave Twitter? Or any other ideas how we could possibly take it to Twitter? Leave a comment below and thanks for watching.